What's up, collectors? Welcome back to Films by Color. They're finally here. Criterion has announced their October titles that they will be releasing later this year. I took a look at them real quick, and I hopped on a call with my good buddy Connor, who is a semi-regular guest here on the channel and fellow Criterion collector and enthusiast. So I really wanted to talk to him about these announcements and get his perspective, because I always have a good time talking movies with him. Unfortunately, we did have this weird technical issue with the call. We had a kind of a bad connection for the first few minutes of the call and his audio did not record for the first film that we talked about. So the film is Don't Look Now. It is the first title that's being released in October and it is a 4K upgrade, but uh, we did lose that audio, but I'm gonna go ahead and post this video anyway because I didn't wanna lose the rest of the conversation. So we're gonna jump ahead right into the second one, which is Videodrome. Next one is another one that you're more familiar with than me. Now, have you seen this one? This is Videodrome from David Cronenberg, 1983, jumping up a decade. I have, actually. Um, this is one I watched last October. Um, oh, interesting okay. movie. Um, I want to watch it again. It has a beautiful, uh, like, digipack release. Well, it's not even a digipack. It's a slip cover. Um, or like, like a... It's not, oh, not a slip cover. It, it goes in. What, what's that called again? It's It's like a... It's like what Metropolis like slip what, case what, I think they call slip it. slip case. That's there you go. My yeah. Thank thank you for coming in <laughs> uh, clutch for me there. Uh, it's a slip case, um, <laughs> but uh, this is actually very interesting to me because I think Arrow Video just put out a 4K of this, um, or at least announced one. I don't know if that was a UK exclusive though. I thought it was also in the United States. Um, so this is exciting news. I guess there if you like Videodrome. Uh, you now have multiple 4K options. Uh, you're going to get different, obviously, bonus features with different releases. Um, I thought yeah. the movie was pretty good. Uh, my brother was not as into it as I was. It's very um, disturbing. It's all about sex and violence in the media and entertainment. And mm. it's very cynical, very much, uh, I think, kind of a horror movie, uh, like sort of successor to something like Network. Um, but very body horror-y David Cronenberg stuff. Um, but, you know, it's... I, I, I don't know if I will upgrade my Blu-ray because I do like that slipcase um, kind of packaging a lot. Uh, but I'll see what they do. They probably are going to do the same thing. Yeah, it's... Well, it's interesting. There's There's been cases of both. Like, they just did it with Time Bandits, brought that packaging back into print. But also you've got the... Day, or what's the dawn of the what's that zombie movie called i'm saying every other zombie movie except for that one the night of the living dead uh that came back as just a standard jewel case correct mm -hmm. that's right the 4k upgrade so who knows who knows uh, hopefully they still have i mean if they still have that packaging laying around they might as well use it especially because it's still in print so i'm sure they do but yeah i was always jealous uh when you showed off the packaging for this one because it looks awesome but it looks like a movie that I probably will never own <laughs> because it doesn't seem like my kind of thing. But who knows? I surprise myself all the time with uh, with things that I, I wouldn't you know, think I like and I give them a chance and I like them. So maybe I should check out Videodrome, even though uh, it doesn't immediately appeal to me. But yeah, uh, it's a short watch. It's 89 minutes. Spy number 248. Very early spy number on that one. Is that the first Cronenberg movie they got in the collection? I wonder. Uh, but yeah, it's also 4K, uh, also at the $50 price point. So two 4K releases this month. Two out of the five. Two 4K re-releases. But yeah, Videodrome. I know a lot of people are going to be excited about that one. How does that... It's beneficial. <laughs> Is that one really going to benefit from a 4K? You think that's? You think it's going to be even more disgusting and gruesome? Uh, I see. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if I will upgrade it. I saw it once. I'll probably watch it again again i i don't know in the case of you i'd recommend checking it out on, on the channel before making the plunge it is especially the last <laughs> half hour is, before committing. is really uh, impenetrable it's like it's not even like pretending to like hold your hand to explain what's happening and it, it can it can get a little twisty and turny um although it's not like i don't yeah. know it, it's 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 different than like a david lynch movie it's just it's a lot colder and like kind of more cynical and and like the the the, the weirdness is a little different i don't know i i can't quite find the words for it but um anyways i i, I yeah. i'm interested it's cool i'm sure a lot of people are happy about that 
And then next up, uh, that one's coming out October 10th. This is coming out October 17th. I'm so excited, Connor. I'm so excited. This is Freaks. Well, it's not. Well, I was excited when I saw the cover because Freaks is the big prominent top part. But it's not even just that. There's two other films from Todd Browning's. Todd, not okay. Not only is there two other films from Todd Browning, there's two other also sideshow films from Todd Browning. Ah, I'm so excited. Uh, I am. Connor knows this. I'm a huge fan of anything like circus or carnival or sideshow related. Like that whole vibe is is is. Ah, uh, I just went through another like kick of of circus films because the circus was in town a couple weeks ago and i watched um i watched uh some fellini uh he, he uh, what was his film uh la strada and then i also watched uh yodorowsky's uh santa sangre and then i also watched pierre atax's yo-yo I, my thing apparently is just circus performers turned filmmakers like that that's <laughs> the case with like your old like Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin. And then of course you have uh, Jacques Tati. I just watched all of his films. And then you have Pierre Atax around the same time. Who's also uh, uh, like circus clown turned filmmaker. Fellini has the same thing. He goes back and makes circus films like a few times, I think. And here we have another one, Todd Browning, uh, who uses his circus performing background to bring us these awesome movies, which I've never seen. Uh, And one of them isn't even like, available right like super rare the mystic according to this i looked up the mystic on letterboxd and it had 10 reviews on letterboxd like that's it that's so cool this is incredible (laughs) i'm so excited and the case looks so good and it's it's basically a box set i don't know what it's going to look like it might be like a thinner digipack box set kind of like pierre atax's five films or it could just Mm -hmm. be a jewel case who knows either way it's three films that i'm very very excited about i read the and that you've so you've got the main blurb here, uh, which kind of like sums up Todd Browning's filmography. And then you've got a blurb for each individual film. And I've read through all those, and they only got me more excited. Like I'm, ah, I'm very excited about it. I love the primary colors they're using, similar to the Trilogy of Life box set that they did for Pasolini, and uh, you know, kind of similar similar to the uh, Jacques Tati and Jacques Demy box sets as well. I I think it looks awesome. I love everything about the. The design on the front. I'm very excited to check these films out. I had Freaks on my DVR from Hulu TV from TCM for a while, and I never got a chance to watch it. And then we eventually canceled Hulu, uh, and I don't have it anymore to watch. So this is going to be a day one purchase for me. What about you? I'm I'm really first of all when I saw this, I was excited for you, um, uh, but also I, I when I first looked at it, I'm like, well, it's Freaks, awesome, like. I know so many people are going to be excited about this. I've been hearing about people saying, I, I just want freaks in the criterion collection. I want someone to pick up freaks. I want like freaks. Can we please have an HD release of freaks? Like finally, it's, it's always been difficult to kind of get a, a, a release and it's finally happening. So when I saw it, I, I did just assume it was a freaks release. I'm like, awesome. But it's not just that um, I'm interested in freaks. Um, I, I want to see how people speak so highly of that movie, but also you got, two silent movies which you know me i I say there's no movie magic like the silent movie magic and that's like and i think freaks is the shortest movie of the three and so like they're really like giving you something special here for your for like you know bang for your buck like this was very unexpected um i've never heard of the unknown or the mystic um but i i want i want i want this a lot i love the packaging i love the individual posters i i wonder if it's going to look like the uh you know like you were talking about maybe not a trilogy of life where they're each individually wrapped but like maybe like the pierre etex is that his name yeah yeah or like maybe even like the carol zemin set i, I don't know we, we'll see um it's 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 probably the the standout announcement of the month and uh yeah i i will pick it up definitely probably in the uh, october if there's a a flash sale in october i will grab it then um and then i mean it's right before november so i will definitely snag it in november because this october um jalo jalo has my heart spoken for so i i'm gonna be deep in the in the throes of jalo during this october that's right. That's right. Well, you got to check out uh, Santa Sangre from Jodorowsky. Not a full Jalo film, but definitely inspired by Jalo. But and there's another one. He was also uh, a circus clown in his youth. So 
I can't wait. I'm super excited. Um, it's it's going to be a bummer if they don't do a flash sale in October. I might just have to pay full price for this one because I'm going to want to watch it in October. I'm not going to want to wait till November. This is the perfect uh, thing to watch through in October. Um, the second one, definitely the unknown, seems to have really inspired Jodorowsky. If, if it didn't, it's just a crazy coincidence. Reading through that blurb, I don't want to spoil anything about Santa Sangre, but reading through the unknown and this very strong similarities between uh, Santa Sangre, which uh, gets me really excited. I love silent films too. I'm a big silent film fan. And uh, yeah, I'm super pumped about that one. It's $70 retail price. Um, so it'll be about 35 in November or a flash sale. It's 55 right now, which isn't bad. Maybe I just go ahead and pre-order it. Yeah, maybe I just go ahead and pre-order it and get it um, in October and then watch through those. Maybe, maybe, we'll see. But yeah, that's definitely the standout for me. And mostly, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not special. I think everyone's excited about that one. Very, very exciting news. Two more we've got here, also within the theme. Uh, this one I know nothing about. This is The Others from Alejandro Amenabar. Whew, I don't know how to say that name. But uh, this is a 2001 film called The Others with Nicole Kidman. I'm, I'm surprised you actually don't know anything about this. Um, this is very much a, a post Sixth Sense kind of movie, um, it, 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 you know, thriller, kind of like a ghost story. Um, it's about Nicole Kidman. She's a single mother who moves into a house with her children, and there, there's, you know, very, kind of ill children, and there are um, like people in the house, and and it's like a kind of just a classic chiller type. Um, it has a you know kind of a it's, I remember people talking about this because of the twist ending. Um, it was always on the TV at um, when I was a kid, like my mom loved this movie and I always heard sp people speak very highly of it around the time it came out. And I think over the years, people who saw it still speak highly of it, but a lot of people have kind of just forgotten about it or it never really had that same, uh, you know, going back to it appeal. I don't think it really stuck around. And I think largely because it is sort of like one of those, well, the sixth sense is the watershed movie that this is sort of in the wake of. Um, but it's still, I, I remember mm -hmm. it being really good. I was like seven when I watched it. So I think it's only PG 13. Um, so that's why I was allowed to watch it, but yeah, no, I mean, Nicole Kidman, oh, was, interesting. you know, in that, uh, you know, this was during her like, uh, heyday right when she was like you know a movie star i, I guess she still is like you know a, a famous actress but like you know the the industry is very different than and it was in 2001 yeah well i mean she's hit her peak recently with her amc ad but uh, definitely yeah i was nowhere near <laughs> i was nowhere near stuff like this i was nine in 2001 and i was not i still don't even watch horror movies so yeah that was way off my radar uh, back then I, I didn't yeah I didn't even know about this one that's really cool um, and the next one is also a really a recent movie too I think um, but yeah this is a another 4k I didn't even see freaks is definitely not 4k right there's no way that's no 4K. that's a that's a that's, that's a blue release that's what I thought so three 4k so definitely continuing the trend of more mostly 4ks because last month we talked about this and I think they're all 4k except for two um, and th this one we've got a lot of 4ks too We've got an audio commentary with the director and uh, some other special features here, including uh, making of featurettes with Nicole Kidman and other cast members, archival programs, audition footage, seven deleted scenes, and then uh, the usual trailers, subtitles, and essay in the form. So that's really cool. Um, another one that fits into the October slate. That's really cool. Next up, the last one. This is a very recent movie uh, that I also didn't hear of. Uh, I'm just running in the wrong circles for October movies, apparently. But this is The Nanny, uh, a film by Nikyatu Jusu. Uh, and it is uh, sounds kind of horrifying uh, from reading the, um, the little blurb. It says it's the first horror movie to win the Grand Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival. So that's notable. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. But this is just a 2022 film. Now, I know you watch a lot of recent movies now. Were you able to catch this one in 2022? I mean, last year? I, don't I didn't even hear about it. about this last year. I didn't even hear about it. That's um, what I'm saying. Not only that, but you, know, you and I know a guy named John who is really plugged into the horror stuff. He sees everything. Mm -hmm. I don't even think he saw this. Like, um, Although I think it's funny. You, you, said, you said The Nanny. 
And I'm like, that don't look like Fran Drescher to me. <laughs> I did say the name. Why did I say that? I just, I just filled it in. Sorry. Uh, she's been in the news lately with the whole strike situation. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, I'm interested. No, it's, it's just nanny. It's cleaner that way. Um, yeah, I, I might check this out on the channel if it's streaming. Um, because like, I, I know nothing about this except for what you, you just said it. So it's kind of cool that, you know, they're, you know, like, uh, you know, a few years back, there was like the lure, um, that was a very recent film at that point when it got into the collection. Um, yeah. You know. That's a crazy movie. I've seen that one. <laughs> you know, the uh, Criterion does this and, and I'm glad they do. It is interesting that they're doing a 2022 film because a while back, a few months ago now, they made that announcement that they were doing this um, line working with Janus Films that was going to be new releases. But then they keep releasing new releases in the collection that people assumed were going to be a part of that line. So I don't know. I guess that's just going to be other new releases. Um, I don't know. I don't know what, what's going to be in that line. Yeah. Uh, who knows? <laughs> I'm just expecting uh, them to actually announce a, a, a monthly lineup for that line or something. I, I heard nothing about it since the announcement that <laughs> yeah, the something. label was happening. Yeah. Yeah. What a tease. What a tease. Your, your, your beloved EO ain't coming to the collection, but Nanny is. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. We get, when is EO coming out? We got we to gotta get that rolling. Because we saw like word about it like months and months ago, and it's, it never, it's not popping up. But yeah, limited uh, bonus, fe bonus features on this one, which makes sense. They usually don't have a lot of special features on like newer releases mm -hmm. uh, because you just don't have archival stuff. But uh, it's got a new program featuring uh, the director and actors. And that's about it. Uh, trailer and, <laughs> and subtitles. So yeah, uh, I don't know how long that featurette is, but hopefully it's a little longer uh, because this is a full price $40 Blu-ray. It's not, it's not one of the cheaper ones. So yeah, a little, uh, little, little bare bones release, but hopefully the movie is worth it. Uh, let us know in the comments if you've seen this film because we are completely in the dark about this one. But what are your thoughts mm -hmm. overall, Connor, about this month's lineup? Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I, I the, my excitement for uh, for Todd Browning just completely clouds everything. So because I don't know that the other ones really jump out at me as, as things I'll pick up. Um, but but I'm just so excited about that one that I don't care. <laughs> I know you're excited <laughs> about the about the first one. Don't look now. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely getting three of these five. Uh, so uh, I mean, I my mom loves the others, so I might just buy that and we can watch it together um oh that'd and, be great uh yeah i mean i might i might upgrade the video drum we'll see and if that's the case then i'll have like four of the five uh you know a lot of the um you know i i kind of cope by upgrading the 4k to be like well i'll get the 4k and i can just give my blu-ray to like my brother but like my brother did not like video drum so i'm like well i have no one to give that one to now oh. so. <laughs> Like my, for example, my my brother. Uh, this guy. Hey, I could. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I could. <laughs> you're right. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I might get four of the five. <laughs> hey oh, uh, if I have room on my shelf after this July sale to fit any more. Yeah, no, it'll be hilarious. I'll finally like <laughs> give that to you, and you'll be like, "Oh, I hated it. Like it was totally awful." <laughs> Why did you even buy it, Connor? Why why would you even let yourself give it to me? And I'll be like, yeah, maybe. Maybe you're onto something. No. No, I wouldn't be shocked if I hated it. Like, <laughs> at least I know what I'm getting myself. <laughs> at least I know what I'm getting myself into with that one. Um, but no, I don't. I, I actually am very excited. I think I'm going to dip my toe into Cronenberg. I have I have an idea. I have one film that I want to dip my. I think the my Cronenberg journey, I want to start with Naked Lunch. I okay. watched a video about Naked Lunch recently. I think it was on YouTube. And I was like, and it really, really got me um, wanting to watch it. And I was like, wow, this seems really interesting. So I think I'm going to start there and then branch off to the more disturbing. I, I, maybe that one is disturbing. I don't know much about it, but um, it just seemed interesting. From what I uh, understand so it is. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> um, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, 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 I kind of got a sense of what it was. but Yeah, I feel like there's a gradient. Like, like in my head, like all these filmmakers are sort of <laughs> related where there's like, there's like a gradient between like, there's David Cronenberg and then there's like, uh, Paul Verhoeven and then there's like Terry Gilliam 
and they're all kind of related in my head a little bit. And I, I, I generally think that one filmmaker made another one's films and, and um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I don't, I don't I'm trying to remember if he didn't make RoboCop because it's Fairhoven. Um, but I will say if you, um, mm-hmm. they have like a, there's like a, it's like a gradient of like cynicism versus like kind of how plucky they can be. <laughs> and I've not really seen any of Terry Gilliam's movies, so I can't really comment on that, but um, you watch, you watch something like Videodrome and it is obviously somewhat satirical, but it doesn't have like any humor to it. And then you watch something like RoboCop, and it's obviously very satirical, but it has humor to it. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, uh, but I would yeah. say before I would say I would agree with that. I've seen a couple of Terry Gilliam's films, and he's definitely uh, satirical and a little cynical about society. But yeah, he definitely does it with a lot more humor. Uh, it just depends if that humor lands uh, with you or not. It doesn't always land for me. And I think that the gradient also works with t- level of violence. Yes, <laughs> because Terry yeah. Gilliam is all obviously. <laughs> on the bottom of that scale and then they get increasingly more disturbing oh, yeah. as they go that's a, that's a great analogy um that's a good video essay you should write that video oh essay. i should yeah yeah i actually need to watch terry gilliam movies <laughs> yeah maybe you should should not buy two copies of of one of his films and still not watch it hey you <laughs> don't out me like that <laughs> <laughs> i'll say though you'll see at the end of the month guys <laughs> uh when it comes to videodrome uh, if you have an interest in it before watching that on the channel or if i i'll probably just give you my copy um watch network the um the sydney lamette directed patty chayevsky written film with um like you know william holden and faye dunaway and and uh at all like that that movie is great and it, it is kind of similar except it's more of like a traditional drama Hmm. Uh, someone just recommended Network to me and Grace in the last Criterion Hall that we did. Thank you guys so much for the overwhelming response to this year's Criterion Halls. I've only done two so far with uh, with John and Grace, and the comments have been amazing. I haven't had a much chance to respond to all of them because there's a bunch of them, but thank you guys so much. It's been really fun. Um, I've shot a third one uh, and that I'm going to be editing tonight and getting it up probably tomorrow and then i also am planning to do another run this week with john again we're going to go to a different store so stay tuned lots more criterion content coming but we had to take a break and talk about uh these october titles that were just released because it's a really cool month and uh, i knew connor had some things to say about it so i wanted to grab him right after he got home from work such a trooper literally just walked in the door from work and he's hanging out with me and talking on my goofy channel about movies to you guys so Thanks so much for popping in, dude. I, uh, I always have a blast talking with you. Uh, and I can't wait to see what they come out with next. We've got two more months in the year. Still holding out for that. I don't know. Are you still think you think they're going to come out with another box set this year? Or you think we'll just Pasolini, we'll accept Pasolini and then just move on to 2024? Or do you think there's another one? You, 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 uh, I think you mentioned last time that there's probably something coming around November time. We're getting, okay, hold on. What, what, Nanny? What's the spine number on that? Okay, here we go. We're getting really close to twelve hundred. Yeah, Nanny's eleven ninety six. All right, something's happening in November, um, but I don't know what because I think like the the Incredible <laughs> Shrinking Man was eleven hundred, and uh, that movie's probably really cool. Don't get me wrong, but like it wasn't like a huge set the way like number nine hundred and number one thousand were. So I don't know. It's possible, um, but you know I like this goofy channel. Look at me. I'm a kind of a goofy guy. So <laughs> Yeah, we didn't even talk about your Barbie hair. Uh, we just breezed right past that. But yeah, and we, we still can. In solidarity. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Connor's super pumped about that movie. Um, and he can't wait. And I, I'm so excited. It looks great, man. It looks awesome. Uh, yeah, I saw. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Anyways, uh, yeah, no, this, this month, uh, right on. <laughs> What do you guys think? Comment down below. ka There you go. He's going to do my, uh, my, uh, my outros for me from now on. He's, he's, <laughs> he, I'm, well, I guess I'd have to start paying you to do that. So let me do it. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope you guys are excited about this too. And uh, let us know in the comments your thoughts. And if you see any of the films that we're not familiar with, I'd love to hear more about it because I'm always uh, excited or I'm always uh, ready to get excited about films that I am not familiar with. And you guys always help me out with that. So, Talk to you guys down there, and I will see you, like I said, back again real soon for a couple more Criterion Halls the rest of this month. 